Hey guys, how are you? Our American journey has taken us to some unique places. And in this video, we're going to take a look at Cape San Blas, which is a peninsula in Florida, located right around here. Mark, who's a pastor from Dallas, Texas, reached out to us saying that his family was coming for a short vacation to their summer house, which they bought a few years earlier, and that we could stay with them for a few days. And I said, wonderful, let's do it. So let's hear about the house first. Hey Mark, you want to introduce your house? Hi, my name's Mark. I just wanted to introduce our house to you. It's called Le Grand Merci, which means a big thank you in French. We bought it right before Hurricane Michael a couple of years ago, and it survived the storm. Come on in, I'll show you around. One of the things we love about our deck is not only can we eat outside, but we can see both the Gulf of Mexico and the St. Joseph Bay. So this is the main room of the house. It's a combination of living room and dining room and kitchen. My wife, Teresa, is in the process of fixing our dessert for the I think it's apple crisp, yes. one of my favorites. Yes. One of the things we like about the house is the lady that helped us decorate it, she picked out some pieces that really reflect the area. We're here at the beach, and so we have a seahorse that's made out of driftwood, and then we have a cross that's made out of seashells over here on the other side. And we have a guest bathroom here. We have four bathrooms in the house. So come with me and I'll show you the master bedroom, the master suite. Sleeping area, and then over here we have our master bath. So come upstairs and I'll show you where the other bedrooms are. Even though the storm killed the trees that were around the house, the good news is now we can see the Gulf of Mexico. So out of this bedroom, for example, you can see the beautiful beach out there. As is the case with all beach houses, we have bunk beds because they say in the beach rental business, it's about beds and heads. The more beds you can get in heads, the more money you make. If you look out the windows, you can see the beautiful St. Joseph Bay. When we bought the house, it was in terrible shape. And after we bought it, deciding to remodel it, uh, the television network, HGTV, found out about it and they wanted to film our renovation. So you can see the whole story of what we did with the house on HGTV's Beachfront Bargain Hunt Renovation Program. One of the main reasons we bought this house is because not only did we want to make an investment that would help us in our retirement, but also because we know a lot of people that could really use a vacation in a place like this and who could not afford it. So we rent it out during high season, and then when it's not occupied, we let pastors and people like that stay here that could not afford a vacation in a place like this. Now that I've introduced Mark, let's introduce the other family members. Meet Teresa, Mark's oh. wife. She loves Good. cooking. This is Derby Pie. So it's from my hometown, Louisville, Kentucky. Charity, their daughter. She loves studying German, and at the time of this video, she's actually in Germany doing some voluntary work. Hello, wie geht's? Ich bin hier in der Strand. Jenmark, their son. He's a college student who studies Russian and he plans on spending a few semesters in Russia. Trust with you. Yellow Blue provided Vermian Aplasia. Wonderful family. They did a great job buying a rundown property and renovating it. Let's face it, many of us dream about having a beach house for the family where you can vacation a couple times a year and then rent it out for the rest of the year. I like this. Welcome to our little piece of paradise. <laughs> well, I'm all excited. You made it! <laughs> it gets even warmer in the summer and then it stays warm up until October because of the currents coming from the south. Depending on the day, the water sometimes is emerald color and it's crystal clear. It's always cold. That's true. Cape San Blas is truly a vacation paradise and it was actually ranked number one beach in America in 2002. Do you girls need a ride to the beach? <laughs> yes, please, no. All right, yeah. jump in. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> what makes you unique is there are no high rises here like in Destin or Pensacola. Just single family vacation homes and low level condos surrounded by the best of what natural coastal Florida has to offer. Also, it's extremely safe. One, two, three. Uh oh. Woo! Of course, you can do all the things that you normally would do on the beach like fishing and boating and jogging and swimming, of course. And because this place has no high rises, it doesn't get crowded at all. And you get a lot of privacy, and I like that. Mark and his family showed us an unbelievable level of hospitality. 
We stayed with them for a few days and then every evening we'd make a fire by the beach and talk and laugh and just have a great time. More. Okay, I'm cooking s'more by myself, first time in America. It's almost done. Just make it more warm. Okay, now you can eat it. Mmm, perfecto. <laughs> Like I mentioned, Jenmark uh, is studying Russian and is planning to go study in Russia. Genmark. So we spoke Russian with him. But you can always run into someone who speaks Russian in the US. Будьте добры, пожалуйста, мне латте со льдом и мороженое. Вот ваш латте. Опа, спасибо. Сахаром. И у вас мороженое, там 5 или 6 ассортиментов. Большое спасибо. Угощайте. <laughs> so here and there, you meet, <laughs> here and there, you meet people that can speak Russian, and it's incredible. This gentleman is originally from Uzbekistan and has lived in the U.S. for 20 years now, and he loves it here. Now with this guy, they really set me up. They said he speaks Russian, so I tried, and he didn't. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> now you majored in Russian, didn't you? No. Oh, you didn't. Okay. No. Your brother. So it didn't work. He replied in English. I'm yeah, like, okay. I mean, I can, <laughs> I can understand like bits and pieces, but my major was in multicultural communications. So ah. just a little bit of everything. Most of the houses in this area are sitting on stilts, and we were staying on the upper floor of the house, and we could feel the house move at night, just a little. So it felt almost like we we're in a train. Another thing that's but unique about Cape Sun Blast is that it has a wilderness area. T.H. Stone Memorial St. Joseph Peninsula State Park. We are in T.H. Stone Memorial St. Joseph Peninsula State Park. Now I got it right. We are rediscovering the forgotten coast. That's what we're doing. Which has miles of sugar white sand. The park's beach has also been ranked among the best beaches in the U.S. by Dr. Beach. During low tide, you can take a walk along the coast to an abandoned shrimping boat called the Donna Cay. This boat ran aground near the tip of Cape San Blas, and now it's become like a tourist attraction for locals. Mark and Teresa lived in France for eight years, and needless to say, they love fine cuisine. So we got to try all kinds of very interesting dishes. What's the name of that fish? It's grilled mai mai, mai and mai? of course shrimp with the house seasoning from the St. Joseph Shrimp Company. They're so, gluten free. Trent, what are you cooking? Yeah. Did you know these are gluten free? I'm making peanut butter yes. kiss cookies. So they are peanut butter and then after they come out of the oven, I'll take a chocolate kiss candy okay. and put it in the middle. So okay. it will be chocolate and peanut butter tasting. Is it very American? I think it's really American. And then we put peanut butter in desserts. We put peanut butter in everything. Of course, when you are on the beach, you gotta watch out for those rip currents. And look at this one. It feels like it's just about to become one. Why do they call this area the Forgotten Coast? Because it's the last remaining stretch of unspoiled, pristine beaches that hasn't been overrun by high-rises and strip malls. Nearby, you'll find the small towns of Port St. Joe and Mexico Beach. Port St. Joe is a small town of 3,500 residents. It's a lovely town with a good choice of restaurants. And here you'll find the famed Cape Sun Blast Lighthouse. Interestingly, at the time of our visit, they had two Staten Island ferries that they brought for refurbishing all the way from New York City. Staten Island Ferry, two of them in fact. Okay, they better be ready by the time we're in New York. Because in Florida you get so much sun, you need to use a sunshade to protect the, the interior of the car from getting too hot. They call this part of Florida, our beach, they call it the Forgotten Coast. The Forgotten Coast, I love that. Did you bring that with you, Lana? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it cost $34. Okay. close to the beach. Oh, this is Dad, the Dead Woods. They have great 
uh, wraps, sandwiches, right. and I especially love their shrimp tacos. Who's next? I'll take a shrimp taco and a Coke. <laughs> Got it. Shrimp tacos. Go. Enjoy your meal. Guten Appetit. Prietna va appetita. Bon appetit y buen provecho. <laughs> and if you travel just a little further, you'll end up in Mexico Beach, which can offer a few miles of perfect white sand beaches. Hey, Lena, do you have an idea where we are? Uh, probably somewhere in uh, Mexico Beach. We are in Mexico Beach, and it's a five mile stretch of white, beautiful sand. Why is it called Mexico Beach? Because it's located on the Gulf of Mexico. That is the explanation. And right now, I suggest we do some swimming. One thing I want to mention is that small communities in America have a very different feel compared to large cities. What really surprised me was the whole idea of voluntary fire department. Is it the, the government's not keeping up with the demand or what? Well, it, it's, it's more, it's economics. It's okay. just like anything else. Fire service is a very expensive profession and uh, it cost, it would cost the, the county probably close to 11 million dollars to get into a full-time fire department. Okay. You know, we have everything from um, real estate agents to retired executives. Some of us are old dog retired firefighters. I was a firefighter in Dallas, Texas for 41 years. What's the most typical thing you have to respond to? Is it a house fire? About 75% of uh, the responses we make are emergency medical services calls, you know, heart, heart attacks, broken legs. Uh, you say you cover up for ambulances as well. Right, yeah, we're, we, we're called first responders and since the ambulance comes from Port St. Joe and they have about a 15 to 20 minute response time. Okay. God bless you for oh, serving our you. community. I, hey, listen, I so people always go, so, what, so why did you become a fireman? And I just say, well, because obviously I didn't study hard enough to be orthodontist. You know, so. <laughs> when you put the air pack on, you're totally, we, we call it bunked out. When you, you're totally bunked out, you're about 50 pounds. You have a three-story beach house on fire. And it's about 95 degrees and about 95% humidity. <laughs> six to eight pounds. You hear that? You lose six to eight pounds of weight fighting a fire. One fire. Reminds me of the one I love. Deep in the heart of Texas. So we have stars, Here, coyotes, I'm cowboys. Make sure I've got we it can't right. ever remember which order it comes in. <laughs> coyotes wail along the trail. Deep in the heart of Texas, the rabbits rush around the brush. Deep in the heart of Texas, the Russians are coming. Yeah. Red skies in the morning. Sailors, take warning. Sunset is red, fair weather ahead. Wow, he caught a shark. This is unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Got it? Not terrible. Alright, give it a turn. Ooh, kicking up my bed with you. Yeah. A huge shark. Catch the wave! Catch the wave! I'm a curious guy and I love to ask all kinds of questions. So we'd have some conversations with Mark by the beach and uh, let's get to hear some of that. Mark, what do you think America has been such a, an economic success with a strong middle class? Well, obviously we have a lot of natural resources, but the fact that we've always had a frontier, Slava, that people come from modest backgrounds, they could go west and they could 
claim land that then would become theirs. That was codified in the law in the time of Abraham Lincoln through what was called the Homestead Act, where anyone could go where the land had been surveyed, mapped out. If they lived on the land five years and improved it by building some kind of dwelling, they were given 160 acres. And so when you think that ordinary people could come from the poorest backgrounds, and if they were willing to work hard and risk the danger, before they died, they would own 160 acres of land. By the time they died, typically towns would grow up. Yeah. Value would go up. That's a huge contrast to Europe. Absolutely. He said part of what made Americans so friendly and uh, welcoming is the whole culture of volunteerism. Yeah, I think Americans by and large are a very hospitable culture. Most Americans are welcoming. Part of that's because of the frontier. When you're out on the frontier and your family's not there, you've left your social connections behind. If your barn burns down and the neighbors come and help you, you owe a debt to them. If someone else's barn burns down, you go help them because if your barn burns down, you want them to help you. Right. So no one was getting paid for that, they were just helping their neighbor. And that fueled volunteerism. Right. And a perfect example of that was the fire station when people volunteer to put out fires, to act as a, a first responders, and without getting paid for that. Am I, am I correct? That's right. No one in the fire department here on no one in the fire department here on Cape San Blas gets paid. Wow. And they put out fires, they literally risk their lives. Right. There's a lot of nice properties here, but what about the prices? Normally prices will range from 300,000 to 1.5 million. Many of these beachfront houses cost a lot of money, but there's also a lot of risk involved. Look what happened to this house. It's basically just getting washed away and there's not much you can do to save it. And fortunately, this area was extensively damaged by Hurricane Michael, which happened in October 2018. It was Category 5 hurricane, which caused 59 deaths in the U.S. and an estimated damage of $25 billion. One of the challenges to this little town is a lot of these houses, like you take this house right here, it's built out of concrete blocks, and it's right down on the ground. They were built back in the 60s, when the building codes were basically non-existent. And people had inherited them from their families. They had built them cheaply. And so just ordinary people, factory workers and stuff that didn't make a lot of money would be able to have a little house in Florida on the beach. But when the hurricane came ashore and destroyed them, by law, they have to build back according to new building codes. And they didn't have the money to do that. And then you have people coming in and building, you know, million dollar houses or something like this right here on what used to be a lot with a little simple house. And so people that used to be able to come to Florida and their family for generations came to Florida and the kids grew up in this town and the grandkids, now they can't come here anymore because they can't afford to rebuild the houses. And what made this hurricane so dangerous is when people went to bed, it was a category two, almost category three. And when they woke up the next morning, it had strengthened overnight to a five. Oh, wow. But it was too late to leave. What are the specifics of uh, building a foundation in a place like this with there's uh, hurricanes? Well, there are a couple of things. The main thing is you have to build it up on pilings, or some people would say up on stilts. You have to build in a way that if the waves and the water comes, it will lightly break away so that it does not provide resistance. Because the number one thing that causes damage to property is not the wind, it's the water. Well, our journey has been nothing short of surprises and great people, and we've really been blessed to make so many great friends along the way. Let me know if you've ever been to this part of Florida and I'll see you in my next videos. Thanks guys.